All right, beautiful people. We are doing 6.1 square root functions as inverses. So here we go. Uh, what we got to remember is inverse operations means you are undoing each other. Okay. So you're undoing each other. So the opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite of multiplying is to divide and verse, vice versa, right? So that makes them inverses. If I am cubing a number, then to undo it, I'm going to take the cube root. And so what we're focusing on today mainly is if I am squaring a number, to undo it, I'm going to take the square root. Right? Okay, if two functions are inverses, they consist of inverse operations performed in the opposite order, okay? So normally when we're evaluating, we, we do PEMDAS. Do y'all remember this guy, PEMDAS? Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. Um, when we're doing inverse operations, we're gonna go the inverse order of PEMDAS. So instead of PEMDAS, we're gonna do what I call SADNEP. Okay, so we're going backwards. Cool? All right, so let's review some algebra one things. What is the inverse of the relation described by f of x equals x plus one? So step one, when we were trying to find the inverse, we learned that we're gonna switch the roles of our independent and dependent variable. So basically we're going to switch x and y. Cool, so we're just gonna switch them. We're gonna do that. So where f of x is, it now becomes x. Where x is, it now becomes y. Step two, we're gonna use inverse operations. So we're gonna use inverse operations to solve for y. So we're gonna use inverse operations to solve for y. What is our inverse operation that has to take place here? Subtraction. What I do to one side, I do to the other, and I'm left with x minus one equals y. Our final step is to replace our y. We're gonna replace y with the inverse, op, inverse symbol. So f negative one of x. And occasionally you may see it as y negative one. So then my final answer is the inverse is equals x minus one, boom. Does that sound easy enough? Doable? Questions, comments, concerns? All right, so because we're in algebra two, so this was algebra one, right? In algebra two, we're gonna focus on um, other functions besides linear, and we're gonna try to incorporate more word problems into finding the inverse. So here we have um, this scenario. The function d equals 4.9 t squared represents the distance d in meters that an object falls in t seconds due to Earth's gravity. Find the inverse of this function. How long in seconds does it take for the cliff diver shown to reach the water below, okay? So if I'm looking for how long it takes for the cliff diver to reach um, how long, I'm looking for the time. And so the inverse of this is gonna allow me to get time by itself. So we have D equals four and nine T squared. Okay, because this is a real world problem, we are not, we don't have to um, necessarily switch, switch the variables because we have two different variables. Our goal is to get T by itself. So if I wanna make this a function in terms of time, what do I need to do to get T by itself? Okay, so we gotta think about our sad map. So is there anything I can add or subtract away from T? No. Is there anything I can divide or multiply away from T? Yeah, there is. This four and nine tenths, right? Because it's four and nine tenths times T squared. So the opposite would be to divide. So I'm gonna divide by four and nine tenths. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Bam, cancels it out and I'm left with D divided by four and nine tenths equals T squared, okay? Now I'm at my E, and what does E stand for? Our exponent, right? 
So how can I get rid of an exponent of two? I'm gonna, it's square, so I'm gonna take the square root, right? Boom. So now t is by itself. So I have t equals the square root of d over four and nine tenths. All right, so t equals the square root of d divided by four and nine tenths, right? And we're gonna leave it as a positive because this is a real world situation, right? So technically, when you take the square root of something, yes, you're gonna create a positive and negative. However, this is a real world situation. So we're looking for real world answers, right? Um, positive time. So we have t equals the square root of d in 49. This is my inverse. That would be my inverse function. It's the function in term of time. The second part asks, how long in seconds does it take for the cliff diver to fall, right? Well, it tells me how far is he going? 24 meters. So to find my time, I'm gonna plug in 24. So we have 24 divided by four and nine tenths. And then I'm gonna take the square root. This, you're just gonna put in the calculator. Okay, you're gonna just put in the calculator and the calculator is gonna give you a value. It's gonna be a decimal that goes on. So we're gonna approximate and the result we get is two and two tenths seconds. Real world, make sure you put your units, put what it pertains to. What are you talking about? Okay, so the answer is two and two tenths seconds. So when you're watching movies and people are falling and it looks like it's taking them forever, that's just slow motion. Because in reality, those people are going down fast. Uh, it's just slow motion, but a real fall because of gravity was gonna be gone in a second. You're gone. All right, let's do, let's do some practice. Okay, so we're gonna do some quick little practices with getting the inverse, finding the inverse. Um, <clears throat> if you wanna challenge yourself, then um, pause, or if you wanna just follow along, then follow along, okay? But as I'm asking, communicate, tell me what to do. Uh, so what is our step one? Defining the inverse. Switch our X and Y. So this is gonna become X equals three half Y minus two. Agree? Step two is now where we start applying all of our inverse operations, okay? What is the first inverse operation? Remember we're doing PEMDAS backwards. So we're starting off with our sad myth. So is there anything I can add or subtract away to get Y by itself? Yes, what? There is. I can add two. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm going to have X plus two equals three half Y. Agree? All right, next, is there anything I can multiply or divide to get away? Yes, remember a fraction? A fraction is a combination of multiplication and division, right? So if it's in the denominator, that means I'm dividing by two. So to get rid of that two, what am I gonna do? Multiply, and what I do to one side, I do to the other side. So I've gotta multiply everything on the other side by two. So that's gonna give me 2x plus four equals three y. Okay, is y by itself yet? So what's the last thing I need to do? Divide, perfect. So I'm gonna divide by three, divide by three, y is by itself. I made these boxes too tiny. Uh, my inverse would be 2x plus 4 divided by 3. How do we feel? Is it any new math or is it just math skills that you already have that we're applying? The answer is it's just math skills you already have. All right, so let's try this one. So I'm gonna tell y'all, because I don't like having to switch in the end, I start off, I actually switch the whole thing around. So I end up writing it as three Y squared plus two equals X. 
And that's so that my Y is already on the left side. So my goal again is to get Y by itself. Looking at sad map, is there anything I can add or subtract away to get Y by itself? Yeah, isn't there a plus two? So I'm going to subtract two from both sides. That leaves me with three Y squared equals X minus two. Now I'm on to division and multiplication. Is there anything I can divide or multiply to get Y by itself? Three, I'm gonna divide everything by three. Okay. And now I'm on E, E stands for exponent. I have a two as my exponent. How can I get rid of the two as my exponent? I take the square root, good job. So we're left with Y equals, and we're gonna put plus or minus because we haven't defined any restrictions yet. X minus two divided by three. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Another one. So we have y equals the square root of x plus four. Again, I'm going to switch. So we have the square root of y plus four equals x. Starting off with the SA. What can I add or subtract to get y by itself? I could subtract the four, right? Good job. So I have the square root of y equals x minus four. Oh, I forgot to put my inverse symbol. My bad on number two. Um, what's next? Now I'm down to exponent. So this week we've talked about that if you have a square root, that's technically an exponent of negative of one half, right? And so the opposite of taking the square root of something is to square it, right? That's gonna cancel out the root. The thing is when you square the whole left side here, you have to square the whole right side, okay? It's not just squaring the X or just squaring the four. It is squaring everything that is on the other side. So we're left with Y equals X minus four squared. And that is my inverse. Okay. Um, this can also be written as, if you expand this as X squared minus eight X plus 16. So either it's in factored form or it's an expanded form. All right, number four, um, let's switch it. So we have Y minus one divided by two equals X. So starting off, I can't add or subtract because I have this denominator, okay? And it's acting as if this was in parentheses. So in, the denominator means that I'm already dividing. So what do I need to do to get rid of the denominator? Multiply, right? So what I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So I'm left with Y minus one equals two X. Now what's the last thing I need to do to get Y by itself? Perfect, add one. So I have Y, this is my inverse, equals two X plus one. Cool. All right. So we have f of x equals square root of x plus two. Remember f of x is the fancy, fancy name for y, right? It's, it's y and it's dress clothes. So we have, we're going to end up with y plus two equals x. Now, if you want to work it through with f of x, you can. It's just more characters to write and I don't want to write them. All right, what did we say in order to get rid of the square root, we have to do what? Square it. So we're left with y plus two equals x squared. What is the last thing we need to do to get y by itself? Perfect, subtract. 
So we get that our inverse, our inverse equals x squared minus two. All right, I'm gonna tell y'all number six is definitely not gonna fit in that tiny box. You've been warned. Um, if you wanna challenge yourself, go for it, but it's not gonna fit. All right, so we have f of x equals two um, parentheses x minus five squared. So we're gonna switch our x and our y. So we have two y minus five squared equals x. It may fit. So this time we have a two on the outside of the parentheses. What does the two on the outside of the parentheses imply? We have to the, the big two, I'm sorry. So this means that I can't distribute because of what guy? Here, right? But this implies that it's multiplication. So to get rid of that two, I'm gonna do what? Divide. And now that two is no longer there and we're left with y minus five squared equals x divided by two. All right, how do I get rid of the square? What do I do? I take the square root, right? So I take the square root and I'm left with y minus five equals we're gonna plus or minus the square root of x divided by two. And what's the last thing I need to do? Add, the opposite of subtracting is to add five. So our inverse function equals five plus or minus the square root of x divided by two. Uh, oh, sorry, let me see. Did y'all fit it in the box? All right. Okay, so that is part A.